What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Blake's Garage. Today we got a pretty interesting project to work on. It's something I've never done before, so it's going to be a learning experience for both of us. As you guys have probably heard me mention in the past, I live in the south, specifically south Houston area. Um, we have an excellent economy, a booming housing market, wonderful people, excellent food, but we also have hurricanes. And right now there's a Hurricane Ida headed towards our friends in Louisiana. And although it's not going to impact us, this project is going to help me be more prepared for the next one if it does impact us. I picked up this storm responder generator a couple of years ago from a gentleman in our neighborhood. He had listed it for sale really cheap because he was having problems with it. He said that every time he tried to start it, gas would come out of the air filter. Come to find out the float had stuck in the carb and it had managed to fill up the entire crankcase with gasoline. So every time you pulled the starter, gasoline was in the cylinder and being forced out of the carb. I went ahead and drained the oil, cleaned everything out, put fresh oil in it, and put a fuel cutoff valve on it. So now every time I run it, I just cut off the valve and let it die. And then I no longer have that problem. In today's video, we're going to be working on that generator. We're going to be installing a tri-fuel kit that's going to make the generator much more usable. Not only will it be able to run off of gasoline, it'll also be able to run off of propane cylinders and natural gas feed to your house. One of the biggest problems after a hurricane is finding gasoline for your vehicle or your generator. So this will make it where I have three options to fuel the generator to keep the house cool, to keep the refrigerator running, to keep our devices charged. The, the biggest issue after a hurricane, not counting the damage involved, is the heat and not having power and not having a way to cool down with the air conditioner. So having a generator where you can run a window unit and fans, it's gonna significantly increase our ability to, to ride out the storm, to not have to evacuate, and to be much more comfortable while we're rebuilding if if that does happen. The kit that I co chose came from Century Fuel Products. It's an all-inclusive kit. It includes all of the connections, all of the hoses, all of the regulators that you need to run all three fuel systems. So let's do an unbox and see what it comes with. So I've opened this up and had a quick look around, but I haven't really unpacked anything. We're for sure going to need the instruction manual this time. I've never done anything like this at all, so we're going to be relying heavily on that. Next in the box is the main regulator. Looks like a nice quality unit from Century. From my research, I'm pretty sure this is the device that goes in between the carburetor and the engine. This is where the natural gas or propane is actually injected into the airstream. That is a key element to this device. It looks like it's really good product. It's got some anodization on there. It's got a nice clean finish. It's very solid. Next in the bag, it looks like we have a threaded insert, a couple of zip ties, some Loctite, a gas valve, another threaded insert, and a wrought iron elbow. This kit is all the nuts and bolts hardware. I'm going to leave those in there so we don't lose any. This one has some more fittings, some threaded studs, some hose clamps, and a little bit of pipe. This is the other regulator that's included. This regulator allows you to run the high pressure propane cylinders that you would normally use for a barbecue grill or crawfish cooker, something like that. This kit needs both regulators when running the high pressure 
only this regulator if you're running the low pressure natural gas you would get from a house feed. And then we have a few lengths of hose to connect everything up. With a big project like this, the next thing I like to do is go through the tool list to make sure I have all the tools that I need. The tool list is here. So we're going to go through that and make sure we have everything. So I have a crescent wrench, regular pliers, all-purpose cutters. I have the big pipe wrench, a couple of screwdrivers. It says you need a quarter inch drill bit, but I prefer to start with a smaller drill hole and then work my way up. So I have a variety of drill bits. I have a spark plug gapping tool, the ratchet and sockets needed. I went ahead and opened up the hardware and made sure that I had the sizes I needed. And then this nut driver here is just for the hose clamps. The instructions also encourage you to change the spark plug if the generator has been ran before. So I went ahead and picked up a new spark plug and I went ahead and got a change of engine oil. It's been a few years since it's changed, although it ha doesn't have very many hours on it. I'm going to go ahead and change it just to make sure. It's cheap insurance to make sure my generator runs when I need it most. The first step in the instructions tells you to regap the spark plug for the generator from an 035, which is standard. To an 025 so I went ahead and did that with the new spark plug so we'll be ready whenever time comes to put this back in and start the generator I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside so it doesn't get messed up while we're working the next step will be preparing the fuel adapter it says to put pipe sealant on this elbow but they've already put pipe sealant on it and then we're going to insert into the bottom of the fuel adapter. Airflow in, so this is the face. You want the elbow pointed to the left whenever you're done. The next step is going to be installing the vapor hose on the fuel adapter with one of the hose clamps. Pretty straightforward. The next step will be removing the air filter assembly and all of the associated hoses, exposing the carburetor. That fuel adapter goes between the air filter housing and the carburetor, so we've got to take all of this stuff off in order to install that. I just found that hose is damaged. It's dry rotted and cracked. I'll have to order a new one. Hopefully that doesn't affect anything. Next we install extension studs on the carburetor studs here. There are three different sets in the kit so you have to find the one that fits your carburetor. You're also supposed to leave the factory carburetor gasket in place at that location. Next on the list is installing the fuel adapter and then reinstalling the air filter housing on top of it. It 
It looks like this cover is going to be in the way. We may have to remove it. I used a jigsaw to relief cut that cover real quick so we can reinstall it. I don't know what it's there for, but it's there, so I want to be able to put it back. Next, I'm going to reinstall the air filter housing using the supplied gasket. You want to tighten these down slowly back and forth. You don't want to crank one down by itself. You may have something crooked. So doing a little bit on each side until they both cinch down is best. That way you're sure you got a nice solid flat surface. The next step is going to be mounting the gas regulator using the two ears at the top. The instruction booklet comes with a template. So I'm going to cut that out and tape it on so we can mark where we're going to drill and then we'll get those drilled out. Alright, so I have the template taped on. I went ahead and made sure there was room on both sides behind this to get a nut and a bolt. I'm going to use a center punch to punch some holes here so we have a nice straight holes and then we'll get them drilled out. The next step is going to be assembling the re regulator. We're going to install the power valve in the top. We're going to install the gas valve and elbow here in the bottom with these threaded inserts. Next, we will be installing the completed regulator to the frame using the supplied hardware. All right, I'm going to show you guys my mistake so that you don't make the same mistake. When I drilled these holes, I drilled them too low. I don't know if you can see back there, but when that is installed, there's no room to put a nut on it because there's other substructure back there. So I'm going to have to move these holes up a little bit, re-drill them, and then we'll move forward. The next step is going to be connecting this vapor hose to the up here on the regulator and then using these included zip ties to secure that hose to the frame if there's any extras.
Always be sure to cut your zip ties at a 45 degree angle. All right, so these instructions get a little spotty at this point. There's a couple more steps you need to do, but they're not outlined very well in the instructions. So let me show you what I'm talking about. The next step in the instructions is to do a leak down test using soapy water. The problem with that is you have to have air pressure on the system in order to do that. And the way the system is currently, you can't connect that to your gas line. I did find this fitting in the parts kit that goes in there and allows me to connect the gas hose that would go to the house. That step is not outlined in the instructions, but it's pretty self-explanatory. So I'm going to go ahead and install that, and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, so that's pretty much it for the installation of the kit. I still got a few steps I want to do. I'm going to go ahead and reinstall the spark plug, reinstall the air filter. I'm going to run the generator on gasoline to make sure that that part of it still works correctly. That will also warm the engine oil up a little bit so I can complete the oil change I plan on doing. Once I get done with that, you're supposed to cut off the gas to the generator while it's still running and run all gas out of the carburetor before switching over to natural gas or propane. So when I get done with running it, I'm gonna run it dry and then we will connect the hose and see if we can get it running on natural gas. Well guys, it looks like that's gonna be it for this video. I was able to test the generator on gasoline and it did continue to run. The hose is supplied are not compatible with the gas line that I have. I'm going to have to get an adapter for that. And I don't have a full propane tank to test with. Um, I will upload a video later when I test it just to make sure that everything works. So that's going to be it for this one. We did get it installed. We just got to do some tests. If you guys like what I'm doing, please subscribe to my channel. That way you get notifications whenever I upload new videos. I try to do a variety of things from golf carts to cars to woodworking to things in the garage it's a i don't really have a theme it's just a little bit of everything um if the videos helped you please give it a like if you have any comments or questions uh, send those over i'll be sure to answer to those that are in louisiana dealing with ida coming in i hope you guys are, have a safe place to go to get out of the way um, it looks like it's going to be a serious uh hurricane so you guys are in our thoughts I've been through that before, living where I'm at now. I lived through Ike and Harvey, and it's uh, it's difficult, but we'll make it through. Thank you guys for hanging out with me here in the garage. We'll see you again next time. Y'all rock on.